to uh, change things just a little bit tonight. We're going to use a roll call vote so that everybody can be heard and Jessica can and we'll help her with her minutes and so forth. And during public comment, uh, once again, the same rules you know, will apply. I'd ask that you, you know, let's be civil with one another. And uh, you know, if we want to do cussing and screaming, let's do it outside. The, the heat's kind of making me cuss a little bit under my breath when I go outside right now anyway. I don't think this is the place for it. Uh, we have a lot of issues and, and we need to work together. So bear that in mind. Uh, try and keep it to three minutes. Uh, Mr. Knappenberger will kind of be the timekeeper. And uh, with that, I guess we'll proceed. I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I would like to make an amendment to the uh, <coughs> the, uh, the minutes of the last meeting. You can't do that until you get approval with approving the agenda. You have to pull those back. You have to ask them. What? You have to ask the minutes to be withdrawn. Okay. Vote on Saturday. Okay. I would like to withdraw the minutes from the last meeting. There, there's an issue, uh, Kim would like to talk about the minutes and not approve them at this point. So we're going to approve the consent agenda without the minutes and we'll talk about them in just a minute. So, you want to amend? Okay. I'll move to approve the consent agenda minus the minutes. Is there a second? Sure, yes. Okay, Jessica. Bronson? Yes. Byer? Yes. Duvall? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Blake? Yes. 5 zero. In the minutes from last week, we had a section called the Courier Building, and I don't believe that it was ever brought up with the, uh, that there was a bid. It was mentioned that there was a bid that was received, but there was no dollar amount that was ever mentioned to the council. So I'd like to have that amended. Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Bronson? Aye. Fire? Hall? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Blake? Yes. Five zero. Okay, additions to the agenda. I have none. Does anybody else have any additions? Okay, we'll move on to public comment. Uh, Mr. Hartnett. Sure. My voice is not very good. I think I caught a cold. But, uh, I see I burst again, which you're saving the best till the last, right? But just going by the list, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> The sniper sighting in on me in the projection room, I'm not a very big target. Uh, my perception of some of the things that have been going on lately is we're trying to turn this town into a retirement community. Everybody's grass one inch high, no tricycles or toys in the front yard, nobody working on their cars. Uh, that's fine and dandy to a point, but we need a balance. Retired people don't have kids in school. 
retired people don't spend any money except to get out of town to go to the doctor or to go to Walmart. Uh, I spend more to spill my semi every time I spill it than most people spend on fuel on their cars in a year. And I'm sure council by Councilman Byer can attest it takes about $300 a day to run a circle uh, on energy costs. Maybe a little less on some, a little more on some, but you know, we gotta have people spending money in this community. People putting kids in the schools. Uh, everybody like a new house and a new car. I don't know how they pay the taxes on it, but uh, you know, some people are struggling. Struggling just to have a car and to rent a house. Uh, I've, I've got an article from the Hutch paper, uh, Sunday's paper, it's called Neighborhood Divisions. It's about homeowners, uh, trusts, and dated communities. Uh, and I can't see this very good because of the lighting, but uh, homeowners associations have served as the behavior police, banning lemonade stands, solar panels, hanging out in the garage, one ordered a war hero to take down his flag because of a non-conforming pole. Another demanded that residents with brown spots under their lawns dye their grass green. People that have got their homes paid for are being foreclosed on by the homeowners trust because they can't afford to pay the dues because of all the people that have already been foreclosed on and the houses are sitting empty, so they've got to pass the costs on. Uh, the black italics say the treacherous part is that homeowners associations are acting like a local government without restraints and they have this extraordinary power. Well, I think, you know, we're kind of acting without restraints somewhat in this city. Uh, it's not a perfect world, you know. It, it just isn't. It, it would be nice if it is, but it isn't. You know, I know of two people in Stafford County that have died from bee stings, and possibly a third. So I think we need to ban flowers in the city that attract bees. You know, we need to get our priorities straight. I don't know if anybody killed from an untagged car. Uh, you know, this is nonsense. An untagged car can attract rodents. I mean, we must have some awful smart rodents because I have a seed wheat truck with a wooden floor that I keep in a shed. And I have one with a steel floor that I keep outside. Well, I can tell you which one gets mice in the headline. Uh, we're, we're at three minutes, Mr. Martin. Okay, well, that's about all I've got to say. But I think we need to ban all the flowers in the planter. You know, somebody could be killed from a bee stand. Thank you. <laughs> Sosa. Uh, I was here at the last meeting, and I'm the new guy in town, obviously, and I don't understand all this nonsense myself. I, I'm a pretty basic individual. You don't have a town without streets, sewer, water, basics. All this other nonsense that's going on it seems a little just down on stupid. Uh, the streets are they're gone. You ain't got it. And they're not worth fixing. You can't patch patches anymore. It's gone on way too long. The streets that have been fixed have already fell that apart. So it's pretty obvious you don't have much of a plan as far as fixing things other than for a week or something. So the other things that are going on around here is one thing. But my interest is real estate wise and over a long pool. I estimate around fifty to sixty thousand months to get spent in this town. I don't know if that's right on the money or not. Correct me later. That's an awful lot of money. And as I drive around town, man, I just don't see it. Doug's got a nice truck. Somebody else got a nice truck. But I don't see no roads. I see water leaks. I see patches that get worked on, and hell, gone the next day. So that ain't a good deal. Uh, if this town's going to go anywhere or do anything, you better fix the basics part of the town, uh, as far as war, there's all these new things are coming up with it. I'm starting to feel like bait. Everybody's out looking for money with a fishing pole, and I'm the bait, and I'm a taxpayer. Hey, right? Uh, if you want to get money, how about saving money? Or be a little more efficient. <coughs> uh, I just don't see the money, you know? Where's the 
the money? You know, I mean, where is he? Uh, so, when I talk to Jerry about it, he can't seem to get the stuff he needs to do the job, and that's your guy's fault. I talk about you guys, and I'm trying to figure all this out, and you can't really put a handle on whose fault it is. But the streets ain't fixed. You got a good crew of men working for the city, and I don't personally think you can lower the workforce you got any lower based on the size of the real estate. You got too much land, and the town's shrinking too fast. Somebody needs to start doing the math here. You cannot keep knocking down houses and knocking down houses. You got a school, I read the paper, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's like 16 kids in the second grade. So doing the math, next year is going to be what, eight? You know, I mean, that's school's history. Should have been talked about a long time ago. Uh, Kansas spent millions of dollars pumping runoff water into the aqueducts down in Wichita. It's supposed to fill up under the earth. Well, they got no runoff water. So your well's going to be history here pretty soon. Am I correct in saying it's only about 300 feet deep? Well, you're right around the edge of it right now. So it's going to be a problem pretty soon. It's going to be a very expensive problem. So, I don't know. Maybe you turn on water and it's not working. You go, you know, you know. Uh, so, having him run around giving me a ticket on my junk cars, which I find an insult, you know, and I told him, give me a ticket for my yard needs to be cleaned up, but I don't have junk cars, and I take it as an insult, and take it high to the person, but yes, my yard needs to be cleaned up, and he got my attention, and I'm cleaning it up, so is anybody else around me, so from that standpoint, it works, but if you need a couple bucks, I'm a taxpayer, you don't be running around giving me tickets, you know, What's wrong with coming up? You know, I got this warrant. This thing here. I read this thing and read this thing and read it. You know, your ordinance 969. I read it. Well, you look at 80301 here, the very first one. Everything on there is good common sense. And the rest of these three pages look like a lawyer had too much time on his hand. You know? What's wrong with people around here? We got the here in the yard. Is that a big deal? You know, and he comes and tells me, you know, I mean, he's going to put a fear in me, but I'm smart enough to know I probably ought to do something. But you got a problem with streets, population is leaving, you got too much real estate, not enough taxpayers, school shrinking, and it's huge, that school. So I kind of think your direction is getting a little, in this business, these people here are the only people who live in Stafford, as far as I'm concerned. The rest of them are home watching some goofy movie or something. At least these people come down here. Some of them are pretty upset. I'm not really upset. I'm probably disappointed more than anything. Uh, we, we've gone over three minutes. Uh, quite a bit. Anyway, this is the Thank you for your time. <laughs> Lou Morgan. Lou Morgan. Come down here, Luke. I gotta see you. Make sure it's you. <laughs> I've been here since '91, and I've seen business since I've been I've seen a lot of kids graduate from this high school. Instead of trying to rub people out, I would like to see the city council try to get. Uh, occupations in here to bring people back and not run them off. And the way we're going right now, uh, nitpicking and stuff like this here, you're just running people out of this town. And like everybody said, it's going to dry up, look like Dana, Hudson, whatever the case might be. You know, it's been brought up about the school. You know, I don't want to see that happen, you know, but we need to look at trying to get businesses in here, get jobs in here to keep some of these high schoolers that are not going to college from moving away. Because right now there is nothing for kids under the age of 18 to do in this town. Everybody's wondering why these kids are getting in trouble. What is there to do? St. John's got a skate room. St. John has got a couple other things. What does Stafford have to offer these kids in this town? Nothing. So I would like to see the city council put their heads together and try to get businesses to come into town and offer, you know, jobs and whatnot and try to stimulate the economy here at South.
helium. Here, 
or stay in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where we had a home. Right. Well, her grandkids are here. I need not say no more of why I'm here. I wanted to stay in Myrtle Beach. She would not hear that. I need to go back to Stafford, but be close to my grandchildren. So I sold my house. And I moved back to Stafford. And this is what I'm hit with. All of these, you got to paint this, you got to fix that. Um, uh, you can't have old cars. I'm an old car guy. I love old cars. I got cars stuffed away in barns that I want to work on. Am I going to have a problem with this when I pull them out and start working on them in my hobby shop, which I've had limited for years and years? I don't want to go through this. I don't want the police knocking at my door and say, hey, you can't do this. You can't have old cars. They're a rat haven. Well, I've never seen a rat in a car in all my life. I've never seen one. Uh, I did have a retractable once they eat the wine. You know? <laughs> so I can't say there ain't none, because I guess there is. But I do want to work on my old cars. And I just, I'm worried about the way our city is going. Because I'm stuck here now. I've, I've devoted everything to get back to Stafford and, and relocate here. But if I have to, if it gets too rough, if you guys are going to clamp down and be this hard on us, I'm going to have no choice but to put my house up for sale and move back south. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Gail Cash, do you want to speak? He said Okay, thank you. Lori Foose.
And I don't appreciate it. I moved here because my mom, I took care of her three years. I got a job down here at Lisa Holmes to cook it. It was too far to drive from Arlington. I moved over here. I've been here ever since. And I'm sorry, but somebody comes in my yard and tells me I've got to cut down my flowers or a tree. I'm going to say, you pay for it, Ted, because I'm not doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Lynette Jansen. Because I have the house on the corner, 
I don't get assistance or anything. So people sit back and they say, oh, she doesn't have a job. She doesn't have to worry about anything. Yes, I have a job. And right now I've been choosing not to work because I can't work and work on my place at the same time. I'm one person trying to scrape and paint my house, cut my lawn, pull my weeds, pull up the trash. I'm going through a whole storage unit full of stuff that I had to put somewhere, which is now outside of my house under a tarp. I'm sure you guys are probably going to get a letter at some point about that. I have a vehicle that's not running. I'll probably get a letter about that. But I am doing the best that I can, along with many, many people in this town doing the same thing. Okay? Thanks, I don't have the income. I apologize. But the main thing is, is basically, if you guys get the people together to do something positive, if you, make, if you in, if give them incentive to do it in a positive way rather than... Thank you. Okay, forgive me here. I'm going to make a stab at this. Uh, Karen Bader. Is that correct? That's right. Come on up. I don't hear very well. <laughs> well, now you know how we feel when you guys talk. Not in three fifties tonight. Out of the city council members, we elected four. One has been appointed. When three don't vote, then I mean, when three don't vote, that means you don't give a crap. You know that that's going to be a yes. But if you don't want to make that a yes and come out and have the guts to say yes on it, then you have to excuse yourself from the city council. Let somebody come in that will make that decision. <laughs> the other thing, and this is to the people that live here in this city, me included, we did elect you. We have learned our lesson. <laughs> we will know better at next election. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to department head reports. Matt. Yeah, the last couple of weeks we've been uh, trimming trees out of power lines. We've replaced several poles. Uh, we've had some power line issues. We've replaced power lines. Working on water wells. We've uh, been having quite a deal with Midwest Energy on our power. But uh, the last two weeks we've had to fire and generate several days. I got a call at 7 o'clock this morning that uh, Midwest Energy told me that they were probably going to need us online for uh, producing power at noon. And I'm pretty short-handed right now. And I told them we'd get the guys together and we'd get on the line if we needed to be. For some reason, they didn't call. But uh, I think that we're going to be looking at using our generators a lot more in the next probably month than we have in the last two years. So uh, okay. Matt, can I ask you a question? Sure. When, when we fire up, do would they still kind of give us a, a credit of some kind when we fire up to meet their needs? Uh, or they, how does that work yet? They, uh, when, when work are tailed, right now we're on a five-year contract with OPPD, so Midwest really don't care. Uh, when I'm, I've got a firm block bought from OPPD, the firm made, when they curtail us, I still have to produce, if we're, general, if we're uh, using 2,800 kilowatts of electricity an hour, I still have to generate the full 28. Mm -hmm. Last year when it was on Midwest, they could not make to produce the first May. I just had to produce the carry. Is it cost effective for us to have this contract? Um, I mean, is it, it, having it the way it is right now for the next five years, is it cost effective for this city to have that? 
this year is going to be a push. Yes, it is because for some reason we can buy power from OPPD cheaper than we can buy from Midwest. Thank you. Even with a six dollar pass through that Midwest charges us to get there. So you're doing the best you can to get this city the best they can, and you're carrying on the power plant, picking it up, and doing it when they need it. Yes, right? we are. Thank you. Well, we didn't think, thank you. Those are good questions. I, Those I, are the kind of things that, that you can present to us that helps us understand what's sure. going on. I, I understand. Um, I just would ask, you know, for public comments over with, and I, I just can't entertain questions from everybody and still get through what we need to get through. But I appreciate your questions. Douglas? I got several things. First off, Joe Byron and I had a conversation Saturday, and I, he's wanting the reports from the city court, and I think we have it worked out the way he wants. So what I have here for each one of you is a copy of the last two city court sessions, and I told Joe from now on they will be in your packets, so you can see what the court did the week previous to. <coughs> shaking their head like they don't know what's going on. We as a council have never ever discussed about ever doing away with the uh, police department or anyone on the police department. We have just asked you to enforce the ordinances that are have already been on the books. Is that correct? As far as I know, that is strictly rumor. 
And I mean, I've heard the rumor too it was going to be changed to a part time police department. As far as I know right now, that is all rumor and that is all I've heard. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else to add? I just have one thing tonight. I have a reading of communication from a citizen here in town. It says, invoice for city of Stafford for Roundup concentrate used to spray noxious bindweed in and along alley east of Main Street for last year, $120. This bindweed has now become a problem all over the city of Stafford and the city is doing nothing about it. I've done my part and spent over $100 on Roundup and other weed chemicals in the last year. With the exorbitant high prices for utilities here, the need to water my property to keep it looking good for the benefit of a couple city council members, I have no choice now but to build the city for the weed control in my area. Thank you, Jerry Seagraves. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to old business. Ordinance 997, delegating a public officer. The uh, state statutes require uh, for any nuisance violation that the nuisance violation be initiated by the governing body of the respective city. The League of Municipalities has issued a legal opinion which states that the governing body of those cities can delegate that to a public officer to enforce nuisance ordinances. The purpose of this uh, ordinance that I've drafted uh, is uh, language uh, primarily, I've, I've tweaked it a little bit, but it's primarily language uh, uh, from the League of Municipalities uh, there are a lot of ordinance which would delegate this authority, uh, which would allow the governing body. Which would allow the governing body to uh, designate a public official to be the one in charge of enforcing this ordinance. So I would propose that we, uh, I don't know what your actions want to be tonight, but that's, oops, that was a request last time from uh, Kim Hoffman regarding uh, how we're going to enforce these, and so that, that's the purpose of this order. Don, my claim is two sides. There's one for the vacant side, which you're talking about, and one for the... Uh, well, there's, in nuisance law, there is, uh, it can be enforced by the uh, city council. A petition can be, can be initiated in the city council. Uh, and that can be, and that's the purpose of this, is to allow them to designate an officer to start that process. It's a process where a public hearing is held in front of the city council. Uh, we've also uh, chosen to enforce the nu nuisance ordinances through the use of, uh, uh, of uh, tickets in city court. Uh, it has become, it's been easier to manage uh, the docket load. Uh, the judge has been very gracious in allowing people uh, a certain amount of time to get these cleaned up. If they're cleaned up before they came to court the other day, uh, I did not even ask for court costs. If they voluntarily took care of these issues, uh, I felt that it, was, it wasn't even worth trying to collect court costs on these ordinance violations. So we're doing everything that in the city court side of things that we can to make this as painless as possible if we just get cooperation from the public. Uh, we're trying to work with people if they need time, the court has given them time, and, and I think that's been our approach in city court. Uh, it may not be what the council wants to hear, but we want to try and work with people, we want to try and get the city as clean as we can. We understand that there's things that that take time to do and we're willing to, I mean, the judge has been very gracious in allowing a lot of time for people if they have a disability or whatever. So uh, I really appreciate the work that she's done in making this process less painless uh, due to the fact that we've been ordered to enforce the code. So uh, we're trying to work with people and so I guess I don't know what else to say. 
to appoint a public officer. Not, we can't hear you. Do we have to appoint a public officer, or can we continue um, and using law enforcement? Uh, is it better one way or the other? The right of entry concerns me. Yeah, I, I think we need to appoint a public officer. The right of entry, law enforcement's doing it, it could be a if it's an illegal search and seizure. Okay. And the public officer would have the right of entry. Does the council have any thoughts? Uh, I'd like to ask that because I'm here to see if we can repeal the 996 ordinance so we don't pass the 997 until we have a chance to talk about that. I was just going to suggest that. Okay. Good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Erwin. Is that all right with the council? To table this until all right new business repeal ordinance 996 Arlen would you come up here please I didn't want to know that I didn't want you all dragging the cart before the horse most people here know me my name is Arlen Warrior like I said the last time I was here I've lived two thirds of my life here in the city list of Kansas I'm the third generation of McGuire's. And a lot of people don't know who the McGuire's are, but sure probably they don't know who my mother was. She was a play fool. So uh, that being said, between the McGuire's and play fools, none of the clan were ever what you could call easy to walk on. Uh, I'd like to get each and every one of the council members a copy of the Constitution of the United States. Okay. I want you all to know that I don't blame you all for this ordinance, fine, fine, sick of all. You have nothing to do with it. The only thing that you've got to do with this ordinance right now is that you, can, you have the opportunity to repeal this ordinance. This Constitution of the United States, and also in that Constitution, is, is a copy of the Bill of Rights. So anyhow, the reason, the reason that we have the Constitution is our forefathers thought at some time or another there's going to be some people in this country that are going to have their problems with somebody else in this country. Now there's nothing in that Constitution that says if your property looks like crap that you have to do anything about it. Also, if your property is beautiful, you don't have a problem either. That Constitution works for every single man, woman, and child in America. Article 4 of that Constitution is what Doug is talking about. The illegal siege and seize and seize. Okay. Before we had this 996 ordinance that was adopted in by the council in 2007. Now, Todd, I don't know whether you were there or not in 2007. Were you on the council at that time? I don't believe so. Sir, I think you got your ordinance 996 well, passed a couple months ago. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what, whatever the number of that ordinance is. Okay. The judge department, the one I'm talking about. Is that 996? 996. 996. 996. Okay. okay, this ordinance was approved by David Kirkendall and the city clerk at that time and the council. In, uh, in 2007, adopted the ninth day of July 2007. None of it, none of it had anything to do with that word. Get packed. May, maybe he might have. I don't know. Were they talking to him? I don't think so. I don't think so. But he might have been. I, I, I tried to, today, I tried to go back and find the records of the ordinance we had before this one. I got it in the archives somewhere, somehow, sometime, 
I might be able to produce it or my attorney might. Now, over the last 30 years, I'm telling you, the last 30 years, the city of Stafford has had this problem about junk and abandoned cars. This is not the first <laughs> ordinance that they ever had written by any attorney. It, the first one might not even come through the league of municipality, whatever you say it. That you guys look for the lead so you guys can follow it. Okay. That ordinance stated in it some of the same conditions that this ordinance did. But it wasn't working. So the city council that passed this one decided to change it a little bit. They tweaked it. They tweaked it a whole bunch. But in the process of tweaking it, I never ever had to go to court over this ordinance. But I damn sure went to court over the other ones. I'm the only individual that ever lived in the corporate city limits of Stafford, Kansas, that ever proved the point that what the ordinance was then, and what this ordinance is now, and what the next one will be, violated my constitutional rights. Yay. <laughs> that I went to court over this deal was nobody ever one dead gun time come and ask me, hey Arnold, would you remove about 30 of these damn junk cars you got in town? Didn't ask me to move one. They printed up a damn ordinance. And they made me feel like a criminal that that man went down to the restaurant and told everybody that anybody stood up at the last meeting was either a thief or a a liar, a cheat, or whatever, or a criminal, he ain't got guts to come and tell that to my face, but he can slap it down forever. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you that if you guys want to push this issue, that you're not going to get no version on this thing. I've been through this before. And I've spent a lot of money just because you have a city attorney hired now, I can tell you back when here on the bed wrote the first damn words. This man is not a constitutional attorney. He's sitting there representing you with his views of what the municipality people tell him that there's an ordinance and votes through this Egypt. And you guys are being suckered in to go along with that. But at the same time, you think that because what he tells you that you want to do is gospel. There's one book that's got the gospel in it. It's called the Holy Bible. We're not running out of time. I'm on the agenda. I know you're on the agenda, sir, but we're running out of time. Well, I'm not out of time. I'll tell you when I'm out of time. <laughs> I could be out of time, but I can guarantee you, you can throw my ass out of this place. I'll be out of time. But I'll be back next time, the time after that, the time after that, till you guys get straight. Okay, yeah. sir. What? We do have a problem in town with Jeff. Can you say there can you agree? nobody in the world ever said that? No, no, listen to me and quit arguing, okay? We do have a problem with junk, right? Yes or no? We've got junk everywhere. Okay. Yeah. But they don't get all the way in all that form of automobiles. All right, can, if you don't like what we have written, I'm very happy to rewrite it. And I would, if you want to help rewrite it, why don't you present, send me something that you can live with, and we'll look at it, and we'll, we'll look at it and see. You know, if you think you know constitutional law, why don't you write an ordinance that you think that would work in this city, and I'll look at it, I'll, I'll have probably have a second opinion of it done, and we'll tweak and we'll tweak it to where it's workable. I mean, I'm not opposed to changing that what you've got on the books. Our problem that we have with any ordinance that you guys make up, however we ever to get at that, the main thing of it is you only want to impose it on certain people. And well, we, have, we, have, we have selective law enforcement. This word states that two people 
have to sign a complaint. I went down to City Hall and asked her, asked the city clerk, how many people have signed a complaint? No, not one. You guys are the complainers. I mean, that's, and that's the way it's written, okay? If you don't like it, I'm telling you, write something up, we'll look at it. Why don't you make this? Why don't you, if you have, if you have such good ideas, you put them down on paper and we'll look at it. Why don't you make this man here that serves out the tickets go by the ordinance? Why don't you bring the damn ordinance and the tickets at the same time when it says on the ordinance you got to have two people complain? Because we're, we're, we're using the city court as opposed to the... Now, if you want to go through the city council procedure, we'll be happy to... If you want your ticket written that way, we'll be happy to do it. No, that's, won't not, be a ticket. that's not going to work. You can't make exceptions for one person and let the other person do something else. It's, it's not fair. It, it ought to be fair for everybody. Whatever's well, good I'm not any better than anybody else. I'm never fighting with people. But if I got on just as good... Okay, all right. We, we're not going to get any further. Uh, I'm gonna, Don, I'm going to have to clarify something real quick here. Now, he said that according to the ordinance that you guys are working under now, two people have to sign off on a complaint before you can do anything about it? Well, that's what I was trying to do. If you listened to me earlier, when I, when I talked about nuisance ordinances, you can enforce them through the court proceeding with an ordinance I mean, with a... Well, you so can, you're, there's another so, procedure where you can go through the city council. Okay, and then so the city council just basically the decided to go through the, the judicial. They have a hearing in front of the city council. So they there's two ways, ways work. So the city council. So the city, if you'll let me finish my question, so the city council decided then that they were going to handle the judicial forum instead of in the complaint through the city council forum, which seems to me more like more reasonable. I mean, you're saying that you're taking away the requirement of your ordinance for two people to have to sign off on this ordinance to be a complaint. You're taking that off by going to the judicial system, well, that was correct? The proposed ordinance is that not? Is that correct? That was the proposed ordinance is, I wrote in 997. Okay, now is that so? Is that the ordinance you're working under now, or it takes two no, people? No, we didn't. We didn't. They haven't adopted it yet. They do. So, no. what does the ordinance that you're working off of now say? That is the requirement. Okay, and it says it takes two people to sign on a complaint before it's a complaint. Is that correct? And we're okay. Also, okay, so that's correct, right? That, and yet and yet he said that on his complaint there was not two people that signed off on the complaint. So how does that become an enforceable issue? Because we're enforcing we're using another section of the public and uh, Okay, now that's law. what I was getting at earlier. There's so a, the city council So the city council decided that they were not going to use the city council's avenue of going through this we're as far as this board. ordinance. Instead, you're going the judicial route. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That's all I need. Mr. Well, that was part of the, I mean, that, that's included in the 99 or the 969 ordinance. Is, is any kind of, uh, th anything that'd be a hazard, yes. Gen well, I made a list of yesterday that included 60 some of them. I went around the environmental code also. Yeah, yeah, it, it's included in that same ordinance. Thank you, Arlen. Rowena? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, Rowena, you were reading there. Okay, first of all, um, Todd, I do need to apologize. I did jump in with Matt. I kind of did it for your guys' benefit because the more you can explain to these people out here why you're making the choices you make, it's easier to support you. I know it's not easy to be up there. So first of all, I want to say thank you for being there. It may not mean that I agree with you all the time, but I want to give you the credit for being up here. Okay? Now, I'm going to answer some things. I'm going to ask you some things that I talked about last time, and I'm going to take this out because this is driving me nuts. Okay, I have seen some changes already. First of all, minutes are not being uh, not being changed before the meeting. That was happening. Thank you for not doing it anymore because you violate open meeting laws when you change minutes outside of the meeting, and that was happening. So I'm going to give you credit. Whoever it was, and I hope it's Todd Taylor that made that change. I'm glad you did. I'm glad to hear you talk about the previous minutes and make adjustments and addresses. 
here in the meeting, because that's where it should happen. It should be public, it should be honest, and it should be open. Thank you. Okay, Kim, you brought up something that made me think really hard. You brought up about the zipper. And I left here thinking, okay, I know what she's trying to say. She's trying to say we need to save the city money. Thank you for thinking that way. But I don't think you took it far enough. I went to Mac the next day and I asked him a question. Mr. Knappenberger, please pay attention because part of this has to do with you. Okay, you have to do it. I said, is there ever going to be a time after the next year that we're going to need that zipper? He said, very unlikely, but there's always that window of opportunity. So I said to him, why do we not work on a contract in which we contract it out to other communities within our area? And when we're not using it, let them have the use of it. We get some revenue back and we keep a piece of equipment that we may need further on. But we help with some of that problem. I, I have something I want to add to that. Okay. That would be a great idea because we as a city still owe $85,000 on that piece of property. And you're right. So think just a little bit step ahead. How can we make that viable? And Mr. Knappenberger, the reason I pointed you out is because that has a big part to do with you. You would have to be helping with writing that um, part of a contract. But Kim, you're on the right track. I just want to see you go forward with it. What I was offended at is your comment that there are not people who know how to run it. There's two people in this city who know how to run it. And I hope that you apologize to those two men because you were wrong for what you said. You and it was inappropriate. Have you driven by my house? Kim, there are two people that know how to use that equipment. You said they don't. All I'm asking is that let's move forward. Apologize to those men because whether it's been used or not is not their directive. You said they didn't know how to use it. Let's not do that. That's not going to help the situation. The other thing I asked Matt, the other thing I asked Matt was about grants. And his concern was that we really haven't had somebody who's been able to step forward and help with writing grants. Well, I have a solution for that. I know somebody here in town who's willing and able to help us. So I'm going to give you his resume and I'm going to give Matt his resume. And I think we need to seriously look at that. We have somebody here who's willing to put the effort forward, and he's had experience with nonprofit organizations working on getting the grants to keep them going. One of them was the Boy Scouts, and he kept both of their camps going. Unfortunately, after he left, they lost one of their camps. But he worked very hard to get the funding and to get the money and to work on the programs that help keep that going. And he's willing to give this city some support. Now, granted, he didn't know you were in need, so I'm not knocking you guys. But I said I had positive things to say. I'm offering you some things to help. Mr. Taylor, you said we need a group of people working together in this community so that we work positively. I agree with you. Let's all get started on that because we all have to do that. We have to put forth our part to help make this better. They not, are not the only ones responsible. They are the board of directors for a, a business. The city of Stafford is a business. They are the board of directors. It is their job to help look at the funding to help work forward with some things. But we do have a responsibility. But now, Mr. Byers, I do have something to say to you because I do believe you owe Mac an apology. You as a board of director should not, as a council member, and I've had a personal experience with this, when someone has a problem with a city employee, you need to not let them speak to you. You need to direct them to the mayor or to Mac because once you get involved with any details of it, then you violate those employees' right to a fair grievance hearing. This camp, previous councils have done that. There's two people still working for this city that were involved in one before, and they personally lost $1,800 because council did something they shouldn't have been doing. They got involved in something they shouldn't have. They started acting, and they started adding, and they started getting mad, and they started getting details involved that they shouldn't have. That's Mr. Taylor's job, and that's Matt's job. You owe him an apology because you shouldn't have been talking to him about personal details about employees. These employees don't deserve that. They need you to be unbiased so that they have a fair chance of employment and they shouldn't be afraid of losing their jobs. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> you know that enough and Now, I support you all for doing your job. I will stand up. If you can give me good reasons for what you do, I will support you. I may not always agree with you, but I will listen. And as my part, I will try to come up with some viable solutions. That's the reason I broke in and I did apologize to Mr. Taylor, 
to ask not questions because those are the kind of answers that help me help you. But that's what I want to see, okay? I'm done. ago and uh, received uh, uh, help from the council. No, I haven't done anything on it yet. Yes, I will do something on it. It's just, I've been pretty busy with a lot of other stuff. Actually, um, if I can say this, um, Gene has talked to me several times about it and so has Mac and they have had an uh, issue with getting together. So it's still on the, still on the list. He said that he said that Doug had answered his other questions, and so we're going to move on to an executive session for non-elected non personnel. I will entertain a motion. Is there a second? No. Uh, the mayor, council, legal, and Mac, and uh, city clerk. Second. Joe seconded. And what was the what was the reasoning on it? The non -elected. Non -elected. that's the justification. What's the subject? Non-elected personnel is your justification for your meeting. What's the subject of your meeting? We're going to talk about uh, ways that we can streamline things in the office. Okay. Thank you. Robson? Clear for two minutes. Uh, Byer? Yes. Duvall? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Lane? Yes. Five zero. We have some chairs set up back here, so if you'll excuse us for 15 minutes, we'll be right back. Okay, Kim, uh, policies and procedures. Um, on the policies and procedures that we have in place, On the policies and procedures that we have in place currently, I would like to, for us as a council, to look at some of the things that we've been doing and maybe doing, like as far as our uh, reporting to the council on the financials, maybe do those in a different way. Um, on the timesheet report, I don't really see that it's necessary that we see all of the things unless it's just easier for you to print that out like you did. Is it which one's easiest for you, Jessica? As far as it, are you just printing that off and then adding the the dollar amounts up? Yeah, if you would like it in a different form, I can I can do a different form. It's the way it was done before I started, so I just kept doing it that way. If you want a different form, I can do that. It, it doesn't matter. I just didn't really just understand. tell me the information that you would like to see, and I can have that available for you. Hours and dollars. That's all I want. Just you want by department. Hours, you just want overtime hours. Overtime hours. Just overtime and dollars. Yep. And I'd like for us to look at the other procedures that we have um, as far as um, we've, we've talked about doing some things in August. Uh, 
maybe having a cleanup day on that, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about the procedures on that at another time. That's it. Thank you. Uh, so, number 14, we're done. We're done. Okay. The employee, the employee evaluations, Max, how much time do you need? 10 minutes, council, attorney, hire. Okay. I would entertain a motion.